Certainly he's one of the most important German artists in the 20th century. It's of course unusual that a Montrealer would have their portrait painted by such a, a master, you know, internationally known, known master, and the story I think is important. There's a, a kind of, I would say, brutal honesty about his work. It's peopled with uh, people who ha who uh, are walking with crutches, who have lost limbs, uh, also prostitutes that were prevalent on the streets. When Dix uh, returned uh, from the war, he said he saw everything in grey without colour. And so in fact his first paintings after the war were colourless. And he said he made paintings and drawings to exercise war. By the 1925, Dix had actually established himself as a very popular uh, portrait painter. So he painted uh, the intellectuals of the time, and he was quite uh, sought after at that time. He was also a scandalous artist. He had been to uh, court twice um, for paintings that were considered obscene at the time. Hugo Simons was hired by Dix when a client uh, refused to pay for a painting by Dix. It was really a painting of his daughter. He felt it wasn't a true likeness. Simons pleaded on behalf of Dix, um, and so he won the case. So it was really the beginning of a, a long relationship. Um, in 1925, Hugo Simons, who was a supporter of artists, commissioned Dix for his portrait and uh, it's that portrait that was made um, in 25, was brought with the Simons family uh, when they immigrated to Montreal. The Simons family decided really that they wanted the painting to stay in Montreal because the city had been good to them and so uh, the museum wanted to buy the painting but of course by then Dick's paintings were worth quite a bit of money and so the Montreal Museum really began a campaign to raise money locally um, and succeeded with grants from the Government of Canada, many private donations and the collaboration of the Simons family to purchase the painting in 1993.